I knew when I heard the 10 awesome people share their stories that the documentary was going to change the world. I call these individuals world changers because to me, a world changer is someone who changes the world one person at a time. I had Mr. Robinson. Mr. Robinson was, um, is a male who was a victim to older family members. He was As children, we play a lot. Yes. And then we have older cousins that know certain things and those play things, you become that play item. Yes. You know, you become part of the play. You're like, we played house. Yes. You know, we played doctor. Mm -hmm. We played a lot of things. I, re I remember being, I remember being the doctor, you know, and having my cousins on the board, on the iron the board, and we would play. But then when my older cousins came in, mm -hmm. it became a different situation because they were a little bit more experienced with things, and they used to use the younger cousins as those play things. Yeah. It was in his preteens, and they were older, and they knew exactly what they were doing, and they victimized him. The one thing that I appreciate about Mr. Robinson, you don't get too many men who share their stories because of the stigma. The stigma is that if a male is um, a victim, that they're going to victimize others. That is so not true. Now, the enemy is necessary. Please get that out your mind. That is not true. No more is it to say that I'm a survivor, that I would ever victimize anyone else. Most of us do not want to ever inflict harm on another child because we have experienced it. I have a Vini. A Vini story was so powerful to me because this individual was a family member for Touches a very long me. time. And then as they began to touch me in my private area, they began to say, see how enjoyable this is. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, the first couple of times I didn't understand, like, no, this is not enjoyable. No, this, th th this doesn't seem like this is right. right. And How old were you? I'm sorry. I was, I started, it started. I had my first period at eight. Mm. So I was about eight. Okay. I was about eight. So I just want to ask for a reason because you need to understand everybody I'm bringing here has different ages. She's eight. I was eight because I, I remember um, having my period for the first time and I thought I was dying. Mm. And then two months later, I was on my cycle and they said, well, I'll just put a rag up under me. Why didn't I tell? Because my self-esteem told me not to. Because I felt that, you know, first of all, they wouldn't trust me. They yes. wouldn't believe me. Yes. And then um, because I was already broken and I didn't have a value inside of me, I said, what is the purpose of telling? And then I thought I deserve it. Yes. Because I was less As than. a young lady. So it wasn't. Zessa and I have a connecting story. Her predator is was in the family of my predator. It was actually a family of predators, to be honest. And he touched me. And I felt uncomfortable right away. How and old I, are you? I was 12. Oh. I, was, I was 12. So they were, and, they, and I was a late bloomer, so they wasn't even like, there yet. Yes. I didn't have any breasts. Yes. Because I was a late bloomer. Mine didn't come till later. So I was like, I, but I definitely felt uncomfortable with his touch. So I was like, I I was thinking because he was a family member, that was a mistake. Okay. Not it was okay. That was, was a, a mistake. mistake. He mistakenly done, did that he to you. He mistakenly touched me, brushed against me yes. as he was showing me like he where he was going to paint. Yes. That was a mistake. So how did you know the next time that it wasn't a mistake? I realized that first time was not a mistake when it happened the next time. Mm. How long did he continue to abuse you? He continued to abuse me from the time I was I came there at 12 until the time I left at 18. And let me ask you a question because this is what um, makes me scream. Um, when people say, why didn't, why didn't you tell? What happened between 12 and 18 when you became a victim that you 
you just didn't flip out and, you know, because people think that you're supposed to just flip out or whatever. They don't understand that you trust and love this I, person. I, I did but, trust and love him because of his family. Yes. That was taking care of me. Yes. Say it again. Financially, they were taking care I had a roof over my head. I have food in my belly. You yes. know, he was taking care of me. So, what? And he was taking not only me, but the whole family. Mm. I don't understand that. He was taking care of the whole like, family. How do you tell about so someone who's taking care of the family? I didn't know what to do in that situation. I like I wanted to tell. For who? But who exactly? Who? who do I tell that it won't be such a devastation on the family and for me? Like you know, if I tell, where do where does that leave me? Yes, I had Tessa. Tessa is definitely a strong woman. Her story was that a family member. And you're going to hear this. This is common. Why we didn't tell. A family member not only victimized her, but the males in the family too. Child, which for me. The, oh, goody two shoes. Mm -hmm. I stayed. I was in church about three to four nights every week. And that didn't include Sunday. Yeah. So we had Bible study. We had this. We had that. Whenever the church doors were open, I was there. So four or five days. I was that child that they probably wouldn't have seen either because they thought, oh, she's just a really good, quiet yes. girl. She's in the church. The church was my safe haven. I felt that if you, if I was standing in the presence of God, if I was before people who were pastors and all of us said that I was safe there. Yes. And so I tried to stay in the church as much as I possibly could so that I could be safe. Well, if someone hurts you and they don't say they're sorry, you have to forgive them anyway. And I didn't understand. I'm like, well, why should I forgive them if they did something to me? And I didn't do anything back to them. And they drilled it in my head. If if you don't forgive them, you'll be walking around angry and hurt. They will have let it go. And they've gone mm -hmm. on to whoever. They may even do it to somebody oh, else. Yes. But you'll be the one walking around angry. And you're thinking about it constantly. And you're apprehensive when you see them. Because you've got this anger building up. you. So you've got to learn to forgive for you. So in my early teens... I learned to forgive, whereas my sister carried it with her Girl. all throughout her twenties and her thirties. I, I had to. That is that was me. <laughs> I, my, my sister was furious yes. up through her thirties, her forties. Um, she was just a furious, furious woman, and I was the one. I was the one crying inside. Yes. And so yes. I was trying to learn to forgive because I wanted to be Christ-like, yes. and I wanted to be able to say that He did not have control over me because I knew that anger meant that He had control over me yes. and I didn't I was that although I was quiet I did not want anybody to have control mm -hmm. over me so these three different areas an educator a parent or a victim what and a victim what would your advice be to these three individuals I'm going to start with the parent okay and I start with the parent because as a parent myself now one of the things you had, one of your other questions was how it changed you as a parent now well how how's it influenced you as a parent my children, I'm very protective of. Yes. So I taught them starting at like age two. Yes. They don't touch you here. Did anybody touch you here? So when, if I have to leave my child with someone, even if it's a relative, yeah, yes, because it was a relative who touched mm -hmm. me. Um, did they touch you here? Did they kiss you here? Mm -hmm. Did they? I asked. That I go through. I was. Go, I would go through a series of questions. Yes. Of did they touch you here? To this day, I still ask one of my children. The Anyone touch you at school here? Yes. Did anyone do this? Did anyone touch here? No, they're not. Any, is anybody allowed to touch here? Show me where this is. Yes. Show me this body part. Show me that body part. Who's allowed to touch that? And I go through all those things. So I would tell a parent to talk to your children about their body parts yes. and who is allowed to touch them yes. there. Who is allowed to even wash yes. you there? Who's allowed to go with you into a bathroom there? And whoever does they need to ask them about it on a daily we, we are life gets so rushed and we don't stop oh hi how was school and keep, keep it at that right. and you don't even hear that answer yes but still take time out because they're they're important to us yes. and we're the ones that are supposed to protect them my mom was a, a single mom at the time she was always trying 
she was working two jobs and then doing volunteer work. So she was always gone, gone, gone. And mm-hmm. I know she did the best that she could, but she didn't ask me enough questions. Yes. And so now I want to be that mom that asks as many questions as I possibly can. So that would be my advice to, to moms. To educators, I would say pay attention to even the quiet ones. Yes. The quiet ones are still giving a message, even in, in being good. Yes. You're quiet and you're good. Um why are you so quiet? What are the books you draw? Ask me to draw you a picture. Mm-hmm. Ask me about touch. What what makes me? Why am Why am I so quiet? Why am I so introverted? Why do Why do I? I not want to be with anybody. Why don't I want anybody in my space? When a child does not want, it's not na- children are naturally free spirited. Yes. We want to run. We want to play. Yes. We want to do all that. So, for a child to be withdrawn, there's something going on. They're they're, they're giving you the signs. They yes. want you to ask questions. They want they want to know there's a safe space. Yes. They've got whether it's school yes. or church. Mm-hmm. They want to know they have a safe space that they can talk to someone and be heard. So and then I'm sorry, I missed the other one. Educators um parents, parents and the victims. So oh, we have somebody victim. that's not telling their stories now. To a victim, scared. I would have to say to a victim, um, you can become a victor. Mm-hmm. Every your story benefits somebody somewhere. There is there's a little girl like you. There's a little boy like you who's going through what you're going through. And your predator will continue to go on and do what they're doing because we're taught to not. Don't, keep don't, secrets. Don't, 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 don't keep don't secrets. tell anybody. Here's, here's those marshmallow cookies. Yes. Here's that pogey. Yes. And so if you just don't tell, then nobody has to know. Yes. It's and so secret. have the conversation. And if some the person that you tell it to doesn't hear you, tell somebody else. And keep telling it until somebody somebody hears you, because somebody will hear. There'll be somebody who will believe you. And if you, if your truth is your truth, nobody else can take that away. I have Kelly. Kelly story, when she first told me that she was a little girl and she was seven years old, and he's starting to touch him already. Mm -hmm. Does it progress? Yes, it it, it progresses a lot. Um, He begins to just touch and feel. And then he began to unbutton clothes. And he began to go inside my pants. He began to, my breasts, he began to um, lick on the back of my neck. He began to, um, uh, he pulled out his, his penis. He pulled out his penis and um, he began to tell me to rub it and feel on it. And then he, he told me that um, it's going to be okay. Don't cry. And I, at this time I'm crying because I it, it just didn't smell right. Yes. It was something different for me. He made me uh, give him oral sex, and um, at the time I didn't know what it was. Yes. I really didn't. I didn't know what he was doing. And all I know is I remember the smell vividly. Like I remember the smell, and I remember the the, the skin texture. Mm-hmm. I remember all of this. Mm-hmm. I remember the taste on my tongue, and um, and then it got to the penetration part. So and how old were you when you started penetrating him? I should say, I, I think I was about seven or eight now. Okay. Because it, it went on. Okay. Like it went on. I never said anything for a year. And it just, you know, the, the place changed, but it was um, still the same routine where I went outside and I played and I was living at my grandma's house. And um, I remember him um, vaginally. I remember him. But it, was, it wasn't it was from the front. It was from the back. And he held me down dirty pillow. It was a really, really dirty, stinky pillow. And he hit my face down and then he started getting violent. That's when the violence came in. Yes. And when the violence came in, I know I wasn't going to say nothing. Children. Miss Jenkins' story was different because she did tell her mother. Over. Over. What happens? Um, we were in my brother's bed. My brother had his own room. It was three girls and one boy. So, you know, all the cousins is over there. This yes. was a regular, that was normal. Yes. You know, we come from a big family. My, my house, with my mom let us do more. Yes. You know, we could stay outside and hang out in front yes. of the building. So all the cousins wanted to come, you know, and that was cool. But yes. so now we, we turned down, we taking it down or whatever, whatever. And I mean, I, to be in a bed with my male cousin was not. Yeah. That was not, it's that was okay. That was you know what I'm saying? Yes. Right. We were like, we more like brothers and sisters. Yes. So, um, I mean, he just, 
like got me and just like was trying to stick it in and I was just like shocked and I at this time 10 years old and wow. despite what everybody said because I always was very much who I want yes I mean I, I gave them every reason I to understand. feel yeah. how they felt yes. but you it wasn't what about. they thought it was yes you understand what I'm saying I have reason how to was he? angry um he had to be I guess about 13 okay and when she told her mother the mother response was that don't tell the father it was a family member, of course. Don't tell the father because if you tell the father, he's going to kill the individual. So this innocent child had to live without sharing this story um, to the father who could have helped protect her. And the predator continued to victimize people in the family. So she wasn't the only one young lady who, uh, who was a sweetheart. Her sister, was, her sister was victimized, and she victimized her. So in this I acknowledge now that I just didn't have the support or a comfortable environment to say anything. I never had family or friends or anyone. Well, of course not friends because I was very young when it started the first time. Um, but I didn't have family that ever taught me what sexual abuse was. I never knew what it was. I never knew what it meant. I didn't know anything about sexuality, sex, anything. Body parts. Body parts, anything. And I didn't grow up in a household where I knew good touch, bad touch. Yes. I didn't grow up in a household where I was told if this thing happens to you, come tell mom or dad. Come tell this person or that person. And I was actually told by the person that was abusing me as a child that if... I said anything that we were both going to go to hell and I grew up in a very religious household where you definitely wanted to be on God's side yes. so hearing that I was terrified so I knew I had to keep my mouth shut that this was our secret as I was told um, so I kept it a secret and that was just it I just never told anyone what was going on with me even though now as an adult I acknowledge that I showed certain signs of what was going on no one ever asked me if anything was going on. No one ever told me, you know, you can talk to me. I'm noticing these things. And you. No one actually noticed yes. <laughs> anything. Um, I was very violent as a child. Uh, I originally was growing up in New York before I moved out here to New Jersey. And I was a very, very violent child. I fought all the time. I picked mm. on people. No one ever said, like, why is this happening? Yes. This isn't the way that yes. I raised you. You know, why are you doing these things? It was more, I'm just going to punish you and punish you and punish you and punish you. You're, you're definitely going to hear that these individuals trusted these people. But you have um, family members on family members. You have siblings on siblings because they were victimized 